I'm an optimistic by nature. And, uh, and as you remember, when we first got to El Sonte, you were there too. It was, just, it was not the safest. No. I could see better days coming. I just thought at some point we have to evolve. I always hope that, that if enough people around had decent jobs and a decent pay, we would make a difference. We are live here from Bitcoin Beach with my good friend, Letty. Um, for Bitcoiners in the know, they know that Letty has the most beautiful home here in El Zante, and it is the prime place that Bitcoiners want to stay when they come. So I'm so glad you're able to join us today, Letty. Thank you, Mike. I'm happy to be here. I, I was talking before we started, I was reminding her that she... She kind of stole that property there from me. I was uh, originally looking at that uh, lot where she built that house, but I didn't have the vision that she had. That house had, what did it have, like three decrepit three, old? It had three and really bad disrepair uh, houses owned by three brothers, actually. Yeah. I, Cause I remember I was looking, I'm like, and they were super skinny. They were like eight feet wide each. and. I was so set on, okay, how am I going to fix this? And you you had a better vision. You just came and just bulldozed it all down. And, I uh, did. It was too many levels. There yeah. were like three levels. There were a lot of stairs. I mean, a beautiful, a million dollar view. Yeah. But the, the, it was impossible. To, I was thinking, actually, I have to tell you, I was thinking of my, my father. He came one night. We stayed there when we recently. He fell because there were so many stairs. And I, th we need to have one level. So it, it, it was uh, not an easy task, but we made it one level. When you, when you finish the home, uh, uh, Jorge, you know, that that's worked with us at, at Hope House. Uh, he, he took me over there. He knew somebody that I, it was your caretaker, I think at the time. And, and I remember thinking when I looked at it, I was like, this is absolutely amazing. There's nothing else like this in El Salvador. But I also remember thinking, this is going to be a maintenance nightmare because you had all this stainless steel, shiny stuff. And I was like, that's going to rust up in no time. So. Well, you were right. <laughs> and I mean, I did not know what I didn't know. And I just had no idea how relentless the salt is. And I don't know. I think this ocean is saltier than, than other places because I have friends who live close to um in some other areas and and it do, it's not as bad as or maybe we get bad stanley still in el salvador maybe i get the, the poor well, quality because i think it's everything i see it with everything with the vehicles everything it does seem like there i don't know if it's the salt and the heat combined if there's more water evaporates off the ocean just because it's warm but yeah it's it, there's definitely a price to pay to being right on the water okay so at that time you know the um naive side of me thought oh this will be perfect we're gonna come retire i put my retirement funds in that in that house we're just thinking that we were just going to come every few months spend you know the weekends and then reality hit the, what you for what you were able to see that i didn't so we decided that to to mitigate that, we were going to rent it, at least, you know, to get help us pay for the maintenance. And uh, that's how the business idea was born, because out of necessity, and uh, people, uh, well, and I have to tell you a story. I went on a holiday in Puerto Vallarta, and then these people have their house rented through VRBO, which was a different quality back then, and it came with staff. And then we had somebody cooking and there was ladies cleaning and it was just a phenomenal experience. And I thought, that's a great concept. And that, it, it, uh, something that there was not a lot of, as you know, there was not a lot of uh, job opportunities uh, back then here in El Sonte. And I thought that's, I can kill two birds with one stone. You know, I can provide services. I give, you know, a few people, locals jobs. And uh, 
and a, a win-win, I thought. Well, I think that's what's really set years apart from everything else is just the, I mean, everybody who stays there just raves about the service, the, the people that cook for them, the people that are cleaning, attending to all their needs. And so it's not just that you have the amazing views and the amazing construction, but but the staff that kind of brings it all together. And I think when you started at that time, most rentals in El Salvador, they wouldn't even like provide bed sheets. It was kind of a you brought your own cutlery and your own sheets and your own towels. Your own very, toilet paper. Yeah, you're very bare bones. And you guys went to the, uh, you know, kind of set the bar of complete full service. And obviously that's why I can never get uh, any of my friends into your place because it's booked up a year in advance. So, But uh, no, it, and that's, it, no, honestly, I did, uh, and I have invested on training, you know, like, uh, a, you know, they, uh, we have taken advantage of some programs that the new uh, administration has. And so I have fully taken advantage of that and they have gone for continuing education and constantly teaching about customer service. So um, again, very good for them, good for me, good for the customer. And in, in a way you played a role in the, the rollout of Bitcoin here in El Salvador because uh, I believe Jack Mahler was staying in your house when he was started communicating with the president without any of us knowing. We had, he had, him and his team had, had asked for us to help them set up things here. And so of course I suggested your home and got them all set up there. And so I, I think, do we have any pictures of that, Andy? I think we had some pictures we were looking at earlier. You did the um, shopping. You went, yeah. <laughs> I remember you went shopping. I remember I went shopping for them. I had no idea what, what, they, they, ate. what they ate. So I bought like a smattering of stuff. And then I, they got here, I realized they didn't eat. They were very much, <laughs> very clean, healthy eaters. And so the junk food stuff that I bought just sat there on the side. Right, and, uh, right. Yeah, they, uh, but I, but. I still remember they were just amazed at the time they had. Yeah, I think that was right shortly after they got there. Him, him and his pink hoodie that he, he wore the whole time. Uh, Looks like yeah, a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you saying that. You're like, ah, man, they just look like kids, but they're just working nonstop. Oh, I Very remember you being intense. like yeah. impressed. Of, I've never seen anybody work like they, they work here. So Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was really they take serious they take their job very seriously and i think they had to leave because you had the house booked out i think they tried to bribe you to, to, yes, they, to let did. them extend right they had to move to a hotel because i had already a commitment and i think they because originally they were going to stay for a short time yeah and they extended for up, like up to three weeks i think which stayed. usually happens when people come to el zante yeah, and they yeah. realize how beautiful it is yeah yeah and then i they did wind up coming back a second time so i think they ran I think that's Miles there. Uh, that also he was here at the first time. He oh, was, that's uh, right, Miles from the Cash App, right? Yeah, yeah. So where he, is he now? Uh, he was here a month ago. I, I don't. I think I don't know where he's at right now. He's supposed to be coming back in a couple months, I think. So okay. Yeah, that was. I think Miles was one of the first Bitcoiners to actually come to El Salvador because it it was that time we start you know launched the program was right when COVID hit. So initially we didn't get that many visitors and Miles was one of the first ones that came. Miles down, so. came, he told me that he came for two weeks and ended up staying like, what, eight months? Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he uh, I didn't know if he was ever gonna leave. So I, I imagine he'll wind up back here at, at, at some point. Um, so yeah, for, for people out there, if you're coming to El Zante and you plan far enough ahead in advance, uh, definitely check this place out. Uh, Letty also has some uh, another newer place we'll we'll delve into at the end. And there's a couple others that she's managing that um, are equally magnificent and, of course, have the same uh, amazing staff. Uh, yeah, there's the pool. It's it's right there on the beach. I mean, it's it's really an ideal uh, setup. I was trying to convince her a few years ago to sell it to me. That's but, right. Uh, you tried it. <laughs> I, I couldn't quite be uh, per persuasive enough, so. But uh, I can sell you Casa de Leti. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it is uh, it is amazing. It is amazing place. Um, well, but I think, I think it deserves it. You, like you, you said it right, is it is my staff yeah. that makes it special. It's the people that help me. That's what, what sets Villa Leti apart, actually. You get beautiful views here everywhere. If you if you just walk along the beach in El Sonte, you find, Beautiful views, but I don't think uh, 
I think I can beat people on, on customer service. I definitely agree with that. I haven't seen anybody give service like, like you give over there. I mean, it really is over the top. I, I'm sure you haven't had any unhappy customers. Everybody just raves about you yeah. know, that. So I think the, for me, one of the most amazing things was you started this long before El Salvador, El Zante became a hotspot. I mean, I think when you started, it was in the midst of the gang wars here and yeah. it, things were still pretty sketchy at that time. Yeah. So what possessed you to, the, and uh, just for the audience to know, you, I, you are Salvadoran. You were born I, in El Salvador. I was born in El Salvador. I left when I was 21 years old. Uh, I left in the middle of uh, when the revolution, a war that people are forgetting now, but we had terrible times. A lot of people died during that time, yeah. and that's when I left. I was a student at the Catholic University, and uh, we at left. The UCA or? Yeah, La UCA, okay. La UCA, and uh, yeah. So, um, and we left then, uh, hoping to be away for just a few years. But I met my actually. Um, our idea was to wait until things sort of settle and come back, right? I met my husband. I married. I have two boys there, and life happened and I began and I began a career there. Um, so I stayed, but always my heart. I mean, my belly button is here, right? I mean, my heart has always been here. And I raised my two boys to be very, my, my children are mixed. They, my husband is from Poland. And so they grew up in a multicultural uh, home. They, uh, but they, I wanted them to feel proud of my, my heritage, right? Of, of, of at least my culture. I, I, so I, from early on, they learned Spanish. They learned to eat rice and beans and pupusas. And, and so we joke that they're, both of my kids are more Salvadorian than I am because they, they dance to the music. They cook the foods that we eat here. And so it was uh, my youngest, actually, Tony, uh, came to study eighth grade here in Colegio Internacional because oh, he's really? Spanish. Yeah, so I'll tell you. So Tony would make, we make, Alex is better with languages. And Tony was, he would say funny things. And then it was, you know, a joke in the house. And he kind of fr got very frustrated. He's now an engineer, but at the time, he's always had this brain that, that language is, was not the strongest of his uh, abilities. So he, um, he decided that he wanted to learn Spanish, seriously Spanish. So um, I thought, you know, a year immersion. So he came, and this was in a time when it was not the safest. Okay. So is that the, the same as the international school? Yeah, yeah. It's the, so that's, that's where my son goes now. My daughter Mr. is Mr. Stepinski still there? Uh, no, no. He, he has left. Um, so Stepinski was the director okay, yeah, when Tony yeah. was there. He just left, I think, a couple years ago. And he was there for forever. He was, so yeah. he's Polish. It's a half a uh, uh, married Salvadorian. But it was a total coincidence. Yeah. But the, so that's where he went, um, eighth grade. So he's now 37 years old. That's a long time ago. Um, that was, so he spent a year and his Spanish, he get, his Spanish got better. He's fluent now. Uh, but yeah, so we, he did that. He came. And I think in that year, he got, you know, the culture got into his heart as well. So he, maybe that's why he's very, very, um, Salvadorian. He called himself Sapo, which means Salvadorian Polish. <laughs> and it's a frog as well he's a sapo and so is Alex a sapo as well uh, you know what sapo means right yeah okay um, but yeah so that was a, one of the things so we always had you know this uh, this uh, longing for for for, and, for El Salvador and that's kind of unique because a lot of Salvadorans I would talk to in in the U.S. would be like what you live in El Salvador are you crazy I'd never go back there so that that was kind of unique for you guys to still have that attachment and to keep coming back and visiting even during the very tough years. And I never, but you know what we did um, is that I never gave them that sense of insecurity. So he themselves never, never knew 
that it wasn't as safe. Because I, one of the things I told you before in one of our conversations that I'm not very fearful. Um, and so I didn't want to raise my children in fear either. And uh, I kind of a little worried sometimes because I, Alex would come in the middle and he likes to cycle. So he would do the Cordillera del Basomo in a, in a in a, and I thought, oh, maybe that's not, that was the time when, this is a long time ago, it was not safe to go around. But I, I still did, don't think it's safe on a, <laughs> on a bicycle here. I would. <laughs> but he's done some of those, you know, some of those. And I, I thought maybe I should have told him you have to be, but now it's impossible. You say, be careful, you know, you, yeah. you can't. But anyways, it's, uh, so we always had, and I, I, uh, I'm proud of that because, uh, um, you know, they, 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 they enjoy and they, uh, they appreciate, I feel, and they, it honors me too, that they appreciate the beauty of, of our, our culture. So, yeah, so, so he, uh, my children are the reason I, I end up in, um, coming back uh, to, with the idea of uh, spending not not a hundred percent, but at least fifty percent of our retirement years will be here, because I have we have the other half, you know, in Poland. My my husband's mother is still in Poland, and uh, we have to you know split our time with the two families. But um, but yeah, but um, it's interesting because now there's there's lots of Salvadorans returning, but you were you know more than a decade early than you know, compared to everybody else. Right, right. So you've kind of led the way for the diaspora to, to start returning. And so I think for a lot of them, they're looking to people like you to, to help them navigate their, their reentry here. And, you know, and I have to tell you, I think I, I'm an optimistic by nature. And uh, and as you remember, when we first got to El Sonte, you were there too. It was, just, it was not the safest. No. And those young people were going around collecting rent from the people who live who they thought had some money and um, when you say rent you mean protection money the protection the, money yeah. what you call the um uh what's the word a better Extortion. word this uh, the, yeah right right yeah. it's uh, they call it the locals call it rent yeah la renta like la renta. paying the rent yeah. right right la renta they they would do that and uh but maybe foolish i could see better days coming i just thought at some point we have to evolve if we're going to be at, at some, and I honestly thought that, you I mean, I, I'm not going to change the world, but I thought around me in my little circle, I can make a little deal. So I thought instead of people coming to steal stuff from me, I'll hire and I'll pay you well. So where you can have enough to, 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 to not have to come here in the middle of the night and take, you know, stuff. Right. So my, in my naive uh, mind, I always hope that, that if enough people around had decent jobs and a decent pay, we would make a difference. And I, that's one of the things I have admired about, because I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, you, um, you have made a huge difference. And I, 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 ha I am benefiting from all the efforts. And perhaps you don't see it um, if you read some of those stupid <laughs> comments <laughs> on, on the, um, but you have to be here to see the change. And I am witness. I mean, I can see the difference. I can see. And now these young people that is, you know, as small as it is, there is some opportunity. I mean, um, what well, used to be, there was just tons of unemployment. I mean, people were like so desperate for work. And now pretty much anybody who wants to work has their choice. No, of jobs. now you can find people. Yeah. <laughs> now there is, I mean, there is it's not a lot of people available. If you need cooks, you'll see that every everywhere there's not a lot yeah. of cooks. I am trying to find someone that can fix a refrigerator. There is the guy never come because he has so much business. And we only have one person repairing refrigerators in El Sonte. We need more training in that department. We need more, actually, we need to train more people on, on, we need to create more skill labor. And I think that's some of the things that I know you're doing. Yeah, no, Jorge and the team over at Hope House have led a lot of great programs. They had uh, a welding program that was part of it. I know they've talked about doing some air conditioning things and some of these more practical skills. But like you were saying before, it used to be people got on the, the bus to leave El Zante. Now 
in the morning, people are coming in from all the surrounding area because the jobs are in El Zante. So. Well, I have like, uh, I do try as much as possible. I like to hire locals, you know, for all the things. I, because um, it, um, for selfish reasons too, it's easier to hire. Yeah. And I, I do want to see, I do want to see the community safer. And I want to, I want to see that. I mean, we're going to start one community at a time, right? So I, I tried as much as possible to hire local people because um, later on we'll expand. But for now, we need to employ all the people that we have uh, around. Yeah. So what would be your perspective on Bitcoin? I know you might not classify yourself as a Bitcoiner, although I, I would say you are. You, you, you accept <laughs> it for your rental homes. You've used it. You're, you have more experience than, than definitely the average person. But um, as, as a little bit of somebody who's outside of that, what, how would you explain to people, you know, the benefits or the negative aspects or how, what you see it's done in El Zante and El Salvador as a whole? Okay. So I have to tell you my, my I'm challenged, uh, understanding Bitcoin has been, um, a concept that I had a hard time discerning by son my oldest son who um uh, he studied econ actually he studied economics at cornell university did a, also he went on to graduate school at uva so he's the one who brought this i this is long before el sonte beach right sometime early and i couldn't comprehend the concept that he was trying to tell me about this um and i still for you know i uh, so i'm still learning what I do, I am enjoying is to see how it has influenced it, this little community. And although for me personally, I'm still learning, but I can see how this, um, this currency is changing my little community. And uh, all I know is how to, how to use the QR code and money comes within seconds. And if I need to buy something, money goes there. Beyond that, I don't fully comprehend. I do know about the, um, you know, the fluctuations in value, but that's like, that is not so hard to understand. You know, it's, it's, I understand how that, somewhat that works because it's in a, you know, it's a, it's a, I guess, supply and demand kind of thing. So, um, but um, I'm have, hopeful. Have you seen like other secondary impacts? I mean, what have you experienced as a, as a business owner here okay. as far as how it's impacted tourism, how it's impacted the narrative about El Zante and El Salvador in general? Or it has put us in the map of the world. I have had, I travel for, for business. Um, and in more recent, in the most recent a few years, mostly Europe, and people who would have never known where El Salvador is located are aware of El Sonte. Um, and, and I think Bitcoin uh, put us in the map. And that has a huge benefit because it makes people uh, think twice what it is. And, 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 it, and we have, I think, um, it's it's at least um, allowing us to showcase the beauty that we have because bit, perhaps they start with Bitcoin and then they realize that we are not just a land of gangs, that this is a beautiful place to visit. And, um, and I think Bitcoin has been our ticket for that. But the other thing I have that people may not know is that the banks in El Salvador are the absolute worst and i can tell you i mean i don't know about africa because i don't travel to africa a lot and perhaps it's worse over there but el salvador has to be among the worst okay. the customer service it it is horrendous it's, it's like they don't want your money or you to do anything they it's it so many steps why i don't get it so if I have to pay a bill and I have an emergency, I can quickly send to my caretaker in seconds and we, we can do payroll. Using you know? Bitcoin. Yes. And he goes and, 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 but I mean, if I have to transfer to the bank, 
<laughs> it takes five days for the wire transfer to get there after paying. If if you're lucky and it doesn't get hung up along oh the way. Oh my God, yes, it does. Okay, oh, I just had, so I I had to pay um, a large bill recently because um, I, uh, you know, the pump in the water well uh, uh -huh. broke and it, it, it cost several thousand to repair. And so I I have a maximum you can transfer because ba uh, Banco Agricola won't let you transfer more than 4,000 a week. And so I am I'm, I'm, I'm sending, I am trying to pay this bill and um, call customer service. I don't know where the money got hang up, but it wouldn't get to the, and the poor guy needed his money. So customer service can help and they give me a number to call. Nobody ever answers that call. I was calling morning, noon, repressing because, you know, I, I feel terrible. This guy needs uh, his money and it took me a week to get that result. Somehow there was a glitch and that money got hang up somewhere. I'm calling Chase because that's, he said the money is there and they're here. Nobody answers the phone. It's horrendous, horrendous. So I had that with a construction project we were doing. I was sending $15,000 down to the contractor and he's like, you didn't send it. I'm like, yes, I did. He's like, no, the bank's telling me it's not here. I'm like, no, I sent it two weeks ago. And finally we figured out he had to go to like the main office of the bank here. And spend a day and, there probably. And spend a day and found out they had flagged it for some reason. And then they wanted like, two years copies of my oh, tax I returns. I had to do that. Yes, yes, I did that. I'm like, you guys are literally holding the country back from developing. You're not stopping anything. We're not drug dealers or doing anything illegal. We're trying to invest and drive the country forward. And the banks here, it's like almost like it's their goal to keep development from happening. It's crazy. So during because by now I build two houses, right? And um, I I had to, in order for me to, to make all these payments, I had to give two, two years of my income tax returns. So this time when I'm trying to get this seven, it was $7,000. I said, you got my bank, you got my, my tax returns. What is the problem? I mean, they, I, you ask, I have given you everything you ask. So anyways, it's, oh, I know that's I, that's one thing I'm hopeful that this current administration will get sorted out because it's really holding El Salvador back. Yes. From developing. I've known people here who wanted to buy homes or start businesses, but they were so frustrated. They're like, I can't even get my money into the country. So uh, they give up and go somewhere else. Right, so right. We, we need to get that fixed for sure. I don't, I don't know. I and mean, and it's, it's Bitcoin is a way that you can bypass that for, for the most part. But there are still some times I know when people are buying properties or different things and the people won't accept Bitcoin, they still have to fight the existing system. So right, it's, right. Uh, ho hopefully we'll see that. I'm not holding my breath, but uh, yeah. But <laughs> those are minor things, right? Yeah. Eventually we'll get, uh, I mean, I, I think in all honesty, we have come a long ways. I mean, in in the smallest of uh, uh we can see some some improvements and I the fact that we're complaining about the banking system and not the crime and the murder rate and that oh, stuff yes. shows how far we've come right so, right right yeah. right so yeah so we're making we're making progress so the optimistic in me says that this is we're going to come to a point where you'll be able to do all your transactions from your mobile phone and hopefully oh, but, or maybe we do maybe we won't need it if we can get bitcoin Go in and become more mainstream, then perhaps we 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 can. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll just leapfrog that system. Exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. Uh, what would be any like advice you have for people that are thinking about doing something similar to you of doing an Airbnb? And um, I've talked to a lot of people that that's kind of their thought of they're semi-retired or they're still working online, but they want to you know come down here and get a place that they're going to kind of rent out. How have you found doing that business Don't here. wait, this is the time. This is the time to do it. It's still affordable. It's still reasonable. Very close to the US if that's where you live. It's uh, accessible and we are moving in the right direction. It doesn't mean we have the, you know, we're, we have a long ways to go, but I can, I've been witness to the progress and the improvement and uh, this is the time. I mean, and I think if enough people come and enough investment comes, 
we will make a, a, a change. We, I mean, it's employment and salaries and, and safety and standard of living improves for the majority, not just for us as investors, but for the people that help us grow. We're gonna, I mean, it's this huge opportunity that we have. And uh, I say, come, come and uh, take advantage of the fact that we're still um, in development. And uh, so a lot of opportunities still available. And are you, and I know I see, and I don't know if it's because I'm in the Bitcoin space, if that's why I see it more, but I see a ton of people from all over the world that are moving here. Some of them just coming as tourists, but others that are moving here full time. But I'm also seeing every time I fly back, I'm talking to Salvadorans that are like, hey, I haven't been there for 10 years, but I'm flying there to buy a property. Um, are you seeing that type of activity? Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, my God. In my houses, um, uh, recent, in the last, the last two years, maybe the, I would say the last two years, a lot of what people call here hermanos lejanos coming back. And, um, and, and that it, means uh, like far away brother or what's the, it's, uh, they call it the, yeah, the, uh, brothers, um, uh, living uh, abroad or something. yeah, right. Yeah. People that left for, you know, in search of better opportunities now, some of them have succeeded outside El Salvador and coming back with their money to invest in here or live their retirement years here. Multiple. I, I, I have to tell you on one particular story. This guy lives in Houston and he's an attorney there. And he left with very bad memories. He was young when the parents left around the time that I did in 1980. And he can still remember the burned bodies for whatever he was leaving. It was terrible. So he had never been back. Fear. He never wanted to come back. His mother had never come back. And they came to my house. He now bought a land. Actually, over there in San, because they're from over there, from near Punta Mango. Okay. He's bought land. He's building, and he's where well, he's. We stay in touch from time to time. And he said, "You know, I came and I felt safe, and uh, um, coming back, he had not wanted to visit in all these years because he had these horrible memories." But uh, yeah, I, I, stories like him, I, I hear I, a group just left actually today and they asked if I wanted to sell my house, but <laughs> I don't know, they were so, serious. So how many offers have you had on your house? No, uh, dozens, Oh, sure. you did, you did, but no, that's, that's uh, <laughs> with all this Stanley Steel rusted by now, but uh, no, it's a good place. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a nice place there. So... I know within the you know the the foreign press the the current administration has has had a lot of negative coverage. Um, I know for myself, I have my my views are pretty nuanced. I I see things vastly improving overall, but but there's still some things that I think it's you know we should be wary of and then call caution to. So what would you tell people just about the overall state of is it safe to? invest and live here and what's the environment like i mean the fear is you know we have a, a single uh we have a government that I, I guess we perhaps don't have check and balances but me personally i actually like feeling safe yeah. i mean i do i to me i think without security there's not a whole lot you can do and that's you have to start somewhere and we have, you can, you can, you know, and I lived my whole life, I've been gone, but, but I lived here a long time. And, and, and I know what it was like too, when in the eighties, you know, when I was in university, we had other problems. Then we were fighting a, a revolution, an unjust system too. But I don't think we can fix things that, you know, it's not gonna happen overnight, it's a process. But I am enjoying the feeling, the say, I feel safe. I used to come to- And hopeful. And hopeful. Yeah. But that's, you know, my nature is like that. But I have to tell you, years ago, I, I've been coming to El Salvador all these years. I would sleep at a hotel near the airport because I was afraid of driving at night. Now I, I drive my, I have come by myself at night. And I, that's something that didn't seem possible some time back, you know, not even going to this. I was afraid uh, of driving at night by myself, but now I feel totally safe. And that to me 
it's an essential it's an it's it's we have to have we have to feel like that yeah we have to feel safe and with, we have uh, i mean I, I have to tell you i'm i'm hoping that we can have a similar situation as what the singaporeans had i have read that story lee kuan yeah somebody i have read about and I know what Singapore was like. My son, and I, I'm, I'm telling you why I bring Singapore. Yeah. My youngest son took an, a job assignment in Singapore. Uh, he works for Dell Computers, and he was transferred to Singapore. And uh, so I, I, I like what's there. And I, if you read a little bit of their history, it was probably worse than what we have here: slums, crime, gangs. And this man came. Uh, and as you probably know, they call him the benevolent dictator. God, I hope we have something similar. It changed the it changed the course of that island that has no resources because Singapore yeah. is an island with no resources, and it is now among the 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 uh, uh, wealthiest and best run in the world. Yeah. Correct, right? And so, I mean, I want to think that we're going in that direction. And it, again, it feels it like a, it. It feels like it. There's. I think it's always good to be skeptical and and because you can't take it, everything yeah. at face value and uh, yeah right. You, I think you have to maintain some of that, but let's embrace the good changes. You know, yeah. let's appreciate the changes. Um, and not just safety. I mean, you just see a booming economy all around. They're more, building this, everywhere here. Because what happened before, Mike, and you were here. If you advertise your business, who were the first to call you? The collectors, the, the extortionists. So people were afraid to market their businesses. The small businesses were the were they were more vulnerable, the ones who had to pay the most. Because people who could pay security and armed guards, they were they were not paying the extortions. But the small people, the people in the mercados and the in the little shops, those were the more the victims. So well, I remember could, it was hard to find businesses because they didn't put signs or anything. And there out. were no you business had to know, cards. You had to know exactly that it just looked like a house or something. You had to know the secret knock for them to let you in to even buy from them. So Correct. obviously you can't operate an economy that way. Right, right. So and now what you see, oh, my God, you see all this small businesses and you can see people's lives changing. Yeah. I mean, I can see it. So I'm optimistic. And the roads and the major, there's all these infrastructure projects. So it all, it really feels like it's all heading in the right direction at the same time. So, so, um, so let's, let's focus on the good. Um, El Salvador already tried a revolution. It didn't work. Uh, we end up probably same, if not worse. So we already tried that. So let's see, let's see what happens with this, with this, you know, with this, government i i think I, I me personally i'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and i'm going to uh in my own realm try to make a difference as well because i think uh if we all if we because we cannot rely on the government you know that yeah. economies cannot be just the government it's us we people here yeah we can make a difference as you are doing and as i hope in a small measure i'm doing we can we are the we are the change we can be the change paying better salaries maybe go you know that's that's that kills me that kills me that someone that is skilled labor i mean i have a carpenter very good carpenter who travels by bus and he's such a he has a nice skill set can afford a car that's to me it's mind blowing so, no, we need to do better with that, you know, because we're going to be better as well. Yeah. So all these people that invest so much developing a good craft, we need to support and we need to make sure that salaries are decent. So we can and then we can. I am going to live better. You 100 percent, 100 percent. And we are starting to see that I'm seeing salaries push up and we're starting to see the first stages of that. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, but right. I feel like we're we're seeing the the first buds of spring here, and and so yeah. I want to be around to see that change, to see the day that you know I I have uh, one of my uh, I have I I have a lot of employees, and uh, 
Two of them, they already bought their car, they have their little houses. Some of them are benefiting from the, some of the programs that you are sponsoring. And uh, I, I just think that that's going to, not only for them or their parents, but the children. These kids are gonna grow up, grow up in another environment. And, uh, and I want to think that we, we can influence some of that yeah. in small measure. No, I, I, I love the, the spirit that you have, and you've obviously helped us with the, the new community center that, that we're building or, or, oh tr or trying to get up off the ground here. What's that been, like four or five years since you first had my that dream? dream? Oh, my God, Mike, the day that happens, I don't know. What I'm, I, it's because, and again, it was born out of selfishness, right? And I see my staff. They are looking who takes care of their kids. You know, they cannot come to work because the kid is the uncle or the whoever is taking care of they can. And so I honestly think that building that center is going to make such a difference for the community here. We are going to change. And maybe we can be a model because um, we as community get together behind that. We're going to change some of these children's future because my idea is that in there we're going to begin just as you're doing in hope house but it's not enough because you have a small yeah we, we have a many big, of these things. many of these yeah. things right because it's just not enough uh but if we can begin training children in there that's not jails those kids will never have to be joining any any group you know to survive we will provide the skill set that they need and create a different society I mean, that would be, f anyways. Yeah. That's my dream. And that began long ago. I paid <laughs> for blueprints, but I had no way of knowing how in the world it was going to be. But I, I'm not one of those dreamers that I believe that if you, you know, you have to start with the, with the pla a dream and a plan, right? And then you find a way to, 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 to make hopefully it this month we get through all the red approval. Tape. Yeah, the oh. red tape and, and get it up and off the ground. Um, but you yourself have continued to, to invest here and to think about the future. I know not you don't just have the one place now. You recently uh, inaugurated the so what you have Violetti and the, the one is Casa Letti. de Letti. Okay, yes. so and that's what like three times the size of Violetti. It's, it's a little I mean, bigger. It's yes, ginormous. It's a I think bit. I think we have some pictures there. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Is, uh, As part of the dream, a top down view. So I mean that's. That is a huge undertaking there. Was it three stories? Is that? It's, it's actually two, two stories because it's in slope. It's a, it's a two story in reality, but um, I have some on the ground level uh, okay. there from, yeah. And that's another place that people can rent, correct? Yes, yes, okay. yes. The same concept, full service. You come in, you rent the house. It's for bigger families. And the idea is it's that six the rooms, six bedrooms in the main house, but it has three small uh, studios down below that you can rent as well. And the idea is that you come as a family, get together, relax, let my staff take care of you. We do the cooking, the cleaning, and then you just come to share or spend time with family, you know, and you're not, it is a house, but it's operated as a full service. Um, it's, it's full service. It feels like you get the best of like a hotel and a house together. together. Correct, yeah. correct. And it's rented to only one single family, so a single group. So you have the privacy and the idea is, is that, you know, friends get together, they come, or I have groups of women that come, uh, friends that that or I have had groups of males that come to surf and they stay together and we'll take care of it and um, we use local local people that have been trained we provide uh, there is masseuses that, that, that have been trained we have uh, cooks that have gone and learned and they'll like pick up the food from the grocery store for we them offer a service everything. if you want to you know we have I have a driver that can go to the store buy all the uh, for an additional fee to cover his uh, uh, trip and that, but we can buy all the essentials and you come in and dinner will be ready. And that's the idea. And uh, and we there is no upcharge. We present you with the supermarket bill or the price mark bill or whatever. Uh, we just charge for the transportation and the person, he'll go and get all the essentials. You come in and everything is ready. So that's, that's the concept. So anyway, why don't you pull up the the Airbnb page? So this is the the one for Violetti, which is the, the one that's, that's right on the ocean. 
And then the other one is uh, Casa de Leri. Away, yes, which is an ocean view, not an ocean front, but um, you can, most of the bedrooms have view to the ocean and, and it's, you it's walk. Just a few minutes walk to yeah. the beach, yeah. You're right. And you know, obviously at this point, Airbnb doesn't accept Bitcoin, but if they contact you directly, you're, you're happy to, to facilitate they, they can that. Pay. Right, right. So, and then I think there's a couple other homes. I don't think we have pictures for them, but you, you've also, because your service has been so over the top, I think some other property owners here have said, hey, can you take care of all this for us? So right, you, right. So we have Los Padrinos, which is also an Airbnb, uh, and El Santuario. El Santuario is a perch on the hills, uh, with a million dollar view to the ocean, but it's, and you're in a quiet place. Um, Los Padrinos is, uh, is about two minutes, three minutes to the beach. It's on the, on the ocean. Well, it's on the second row. But well, and it's actually butts up to the Hope House. Hope, it's yeah, right, right on so the back perfect. side of Hope right, House. Right, yeah. Right. So those are, if, if her other places are booked up, you can, uh, you can ask her about those too, because they're, all of them are amazing places. I've been through all of them. And yeah, I, every time we go and, and take a look, my wife's like, I want to live here. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Where else? Uh, is, is there any other place that, that people can follow you or stuff that you do? I know you're I don't know if you're on Twitter or not. That's where most Bitcoiners hang out. But, no, uh, I'm not. You know, I'm not. Um, I always find that I don't have a whole lot of, to share. <laughs> so I'm not. But maybe I should consider getting a Twitter account. Well, I think especially for the homes, I think yeah. it would be good to have just for people to be able to post when they're there. They can tweet out just beautiful pictures Maybe. of the time that they're having okay, there. So, so I think that would be a I need to come to idea. the 21st century and join <laughs> uh, um, Twitter. But yeah, but I have to, so you, you've been with Bitcoin here for what, five years? How long? How, uh, so we started the, the Bitcoin Beach project. It's probably been four years now. Four years. Yeah. Now. Okay. Or, well, Maybe four and a half, yeah. So yeah, it's been been quite a while. It's made, uh, I mean, it's changed also. It's changed the destiny of El Sonte. You put him in. You put El Sonte in the map. Well, it's been a, a fun thing to be a part of, and especially fun because it's it's helped everybody benefit. You know, all these different businesses that have sprung up, and the, I mean, we've got so many young people now that are in college, university, and and. The ones that are finishing high school, I think we've like tripled the rate of enrollment in, in high school. And I don't know if you know, but they they actually opened a high school in El Zante this year. Yes, so I learned. And, and that's part of your efforts. Well, so. Jorge and, and Irvian and Roman, that was the they've been pushing on pushing and pushing. And so they finally uh, attained that agreement from the Board of Education to come in and and build a first rate uh, high school in the community. And so. Uh, so yeah. makes such We've a seen difference. so many amazing things happening right, here. Right. You had to buzz them in that pickup to Hulupe. Yeah, and we still do because they just have the first year right now. They're going to open it up one grade at a time. So we're still providing transport to the neighboring community to, to keep the, the older students uh, going. But in a few years, we won't have to do that anymore because they have a, a school right here in El Zante. So. See, that's part of the progress, it's, too. It's, and again, it's a community up for as well. Definitely. Yeah. Well, Letty, I appreciate you spending uh, the afternoon with me. I know uh, you don't get too many uh, days here off work. And so I appreciate the sacrifice of the beautiful. I can see the beach behind me there. It's beautiful out there. So <laughs> thanks for uh, spending some time in the studio. Thank you for having me. And it's been fun, actually. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, you, you were nervous. You said you were done with this before, but you were uh, you were an expert. So. We'll have to have you back on here in uh, in a few months and get we'll some updates. We'll have to find a topic that we can discuss. And yeah, perfect. Perfect. I would All love right. that. Thank you.